Okay, so land and labor, cuvee, um, blend of wild and spontaneous beer aged in oak. Up next. <laughs> Welcome back to Views and Brews. I'm Brendan, and this is uh, going to be a real uh, thinking type of beer. There's drinking types of beer and there's thinking types of beer. Um, Land and Labour, owned and operated by Head Brewer there. You can probably see his face, like penciled face there of uh, Thomas Delaney uh, from Galway Bay Brewery. But he has his own little side project in there, which is growing. Um, and um, it's one of those projects where you're doing spontaneous and wild brewing and you need time so he's got a he's got an oak fooder and he's got some um, vats and barrels and puncheons and things going on and all kinds of different it's kind of like the alchemy of brewing and i love that because um there's an element of uncertainty to these beers and there's an element of like you know the beer is going to be what the beer is going to be not what you dial in with the numbers so um uh, so yeah, Cuvée, Land and Labour. I'm going to open it up and then we're going to talk about Cuvée because that is um, interesting. So we've got the old cork and uh, cork and cage on the top of it. It's quite hard to get this pop out. Is it going to pop out? Now, any movement on there? Um, yeah, it's actually beginning to rush up there. I don't know if you can see that. So I will pour a bit of this in and try to bear in mind that um, these beers are bottle conditioned and they're conditioned for a length of time. Um, yeah, so this is the third beer that I've tried from Land and Labour and uh, huge amounts of funkiness on the nose. Um, I'm going to have half of it here. I'm going to have half of it inside. I bought a special vintage 30-month matured cheese uh, cheddar, which I'm going to enjoy with this in a minute. It's New Year's Eve. I'm, I, you know, I was desperate to get hold of this bottle. When I did, I thought, that's going to be my New Year's Eve drink. So in Ireland, Land and Labour is one of those... Um, one of those breweries that has a bit of... Um, um, a bit of an air of uh, in interest to it in the terms of like, you know, people don't know what they're going to get, but they really want to get it anyway. Um, so these, um, these, uh, you know, probably sold out instantly, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm going to read the spiel on the back and then we're going to talk about it. There are many threads that bind our beers together. Different brewing methods, different barrels, punchions and fooders, oak fooders, fooders, that's basically... Uh, Cuvée Land and Labour is the perfect marriage of all those threads, a harmonious blend of two-year-old cool ship spontaneous beer and three-year-old wild beer blended and bottled in October 2019. We are December 2020, so that's how long this has been in the bottle. It's been maturing. They've, they've taken the time to release this beer uh, at the exact time that they thought this would be ready. That's my cat you can hear. Um, so it's been bottled for that long and yet it's only been released, uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks. So it's got barley wheat spelt in it, which is going to give it an interesting, uh, take, um, um, hops. Uh, it's going to have very, very small amount of hops because of, obviously they inhibit the growth of, um, you know, uh, la uh lactobacillus and pediococcus in particular. Um, so this is a beer that's really destined for you to have it with some kind of cheese board or to enjoy it between two of you and have different opinions coming backwards and forwards about the beer. Um, the nose is just absolutely incredible. The nose is so stinky. It's so, so stinky on the nose. Um, it's wild funk. Um, now, it's got spontaneously brewed beer in it, which is cool shit beer. It's got wild beer, which can mean a whole different range of things. But usually, you know, you can either add uh, microbes that have been carefully selected or you can just see what you get. Um, 
but this has a combination of uh, different brewing methods added into it. And that really is the essence of where cuve comes from. Cuve, C-U-V-E, I had to look this up because I didn't know before this video, is uh, just means tank in the wine industry in France. So you have a tank, uh, you put in your reserve, your special, your best, um, your best blends of a particular grape, um, all from the same vineyard or very close vineyards and you make a reserve beer from it something that's just a little bit special a little bit different it's an individual beer and that's what makes cuvee um, applied to this it's um it's a blend of his spontaneous and blend of, of uh, tom's uh, wild beer um that he selected and Blending is really the key to success of this kind of a beer. Now, there is a bit of carbonation. There is a, a twinge of um, foam on the top of the beer, but obviously that goes away because it's sour. It's got brett in it. It's got, I mean, I assume this is uh, loaded with brett by the nose of it anyway. You know, so you get brett on the nose, but you get sour on the taste. So Britannomyces, and then we're going to get some... Um, whatever else we get in here but i'm expecting it to be dry crisp sharp and with a finish to it um anyway cheers slodger that's enough for me waffling on happy new year uh for 2021 um 2020 can go and do one it was an absolute nightmare and hopefully we're hopefully we've turned the corner i don't know it's a nightmare christmas and nightmare new years but hopefully by the middle of uh, 21 we'll get somewhere whoo this is one of those beers that puckers. Okay, there is a real sour element to it, almost kind of like um, the sourness that you get from like a sour rhubarb um, ale, um, because it has that that it has that astringency that's really enjoyable, like tannin laden, um, has that sharpness at the end of it, but it's not like absolutely face curdling um sour it's just an approachable sour um that's my cat she wants feeding um a uh, lots of uh hay grass a bit of funk going on in there uh, a lot of um a lot what do i get out of that now Oh, this beer almost dissolves on the mouth. It's kind of like what candy floss does to you. Drink it, you get that beautiful flavor, and then the beer just almost evaporates on the mouth. It's so nice. It's so, so, so good. Um, the smelliness, the stinkiness of this, like, kind of like barnyard flavors all of those funky things but really hyped up to the max in this one and then when you taste it it's nothing like that because your taste buds don't taste uh, aromas you know those those things all go up the nasal passage what you taste complements the barnyard aromas because there's this kind of like real dry crisp sourness to it but it, it, you know, the more I drink it the less puckering I feel it is and the more pleasing to the taste buds it is it's like it's like the taste buds are getting the you know getting the maximum amount of this because they taste it and then it just evaporates and you're asked to like go again and there's this kind of like um like not quite cidery finish not quite apple not quite pear but there's a crispness to the finish that really is just so nice a little bit citric um that's just fantastic all three of the beers that i've had from land and labor um they've all been individual and they've all had something very special about them this one doesn't lean in any particular direction except for what it does on on the tongue and the palate that dry crisping thing that i keep coming back to it's just it's just so so enjoyable and the nose on it is just fantastic the nose is like strong and the 
you know, the flavors that you get in the mouth are less, it's less about the flavors and more about what it does while it's in your mouth. It just gives you that nice sort of satiating finish, you know, just crispness, dryness, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I don't want to spill any of it. Um, it's unfiltered, unpasteurized. The yeast is live in the bottom. So if I wanted to, I could keep that five and a half percent as well. Um, it's aged in oak. Um, so, I mean, do I don't know if I get oak. I feel like every time I'm every time I'm sipping this, I'm like almost like clenching my mouth to finish it off. It's just so nice, so nice. Like, I absolutely love that. I absolutely love beers like this. Not all the time, but it's so good that in Ireland now that we have, we have options where, you know, you can get a beer like this and, you know, you can sit there and have like the, you know, it feels like very sophisticated and decadent and, you know, you feel like you should slowly drink this talk about it, savor it, have it with some food, get some crackers on the table, you know. Post cat one's feeding. I gotta go and feed the cat. Look, uh, my view on this brew is it's absolutely fantastic. I love land and labor. I love what they're doing. Them and Wide Street Brewing, they're, they're two right ab absolutely on their outer rim of brewing. I love it. Um, that's my view on this brew. If you see it, um, buy them all. Just buy them all. Cheers, Slancha, and it's on to the next one. Comfortable there, cat. Okay.